Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the C Kappa Invitationals. Our cameras are lagging, but our attitudes are positive. I'm Zayori, joined today by Mott Packs. We've got Fnatic versus the Singapore Rejects, the team that qualified through the Singapore Open. It should be a good one. I'm sure one of the more even matchups we'll have throughout this 16 team double a limb bracket. The draft is underway. Mott Packs, how you feeling, my man? I'm doing good. You're I'm doing well. Excited. Come on, oh, man. Oh, sorry. Don't well, maybe start I am. Maybe I am grammar. doing good. I'm volunteering my local museum today. Really? So yeah. So I am Fossils doing good. Fossils and shit. Yeah, and then, well, it's mostly maritime stuff because you know Nova Scotia. So. Oh yeah, Nova Scotia, right? You guys have a lot of cod up that way, hey? <laughs> we're, we're more about the lobster. <laughs> oh, good, good. So uh, you've been you've been following the SEA team. What's what's the talk of, uh, around the town of uh, the S the SG rejects? I hear they're they're in good form. The, the SG Rejects, I don't know. Well, I guess they, they made their way here, so that's good enough. Dude, I got high hopes for my boy uh, Bocarino and uh, Z-Red. Bocarino and Z-Red. Yeah, okay. That's, that's With a name, name like Z-Red, man, I hope he's ready to go ham. First pick in Boker, bold statement in this draft. They're going to let Fnatic know they're not afraid to put their thing down. To put their thing? That's well said, you know. Well, I so, guess uh, we still have the IO left, down, you know. Yeah. That's the big one. You know, do you want to get IO Tiny right now by Fnatic? I don't think you do. That's no fun. Uh, I don't know. Why not? They're on a, a little bit of a streak since they came back, though. They're like four games straight. You know, they're coming back from the majors. They're like, we might have lost games to the majors, but we're here to win. They took down OG in that best of three. So, I mean, Team pick. did they play with Tiny? Uh, I don't think so for that, actually. That was more about the, uh, the Enigma helped them out in one of those games. And then it was just kind of solid play. Nothing too cheesy. Mm -hmm. Some good lineups. Okay. So Enigma Bat Rider, an interesting opener here. Some flexibility for sure. The problem with this duo that I always have is it limits what the Bat Rider can do in terms of recovery farm. Enigma is going to be clearing out those big camps on the dire Ten side. So remaining. now that there's that camp in the offlane, Bat Rider can kind of make Five ends meet and at least remaining. find level six and get a little bit of farm, but he can't do that. All right, we're just going to stack the entire jungle exactly. and you go power farm it and get a nine minute blink dagger. Enigma needs all that farm. So it is a little bit of a greedy opener, but if they can get away with it, it's not a, not bad here. Yeah, it's a lot harder to keep those backup stacks going uh, when it comes to your Enigma. You know, you're kind of hanging out there in the jungle, stealing everything the Bat Rider wants, but uh, it might end up being a mid Bat Rider. It kind of depends. Really? Uh, if they see like the aggression really coming in from the SG rejects, then. You might just be like, okay, you know, let's throw the Bat Rider mid. fair against Invoker, though? Isn't that kind of a tough matchup, especially with Avenge support rotating in? Yeah, I would I would consider that pretty pretty difficult. So I would assume he's going to go to the offlane. It, uh, it kind of depends what they, obviously, what they're going to be looking towards the mid. It gives you a little bit of versatility in the draft, but there's still something like the uh, the Pock, maybe, or even just the Queen of Pain we've seen a couple people going for. Just something that you're not too worried about dying in the mid lane. Same, yeah. same thing with Zeus, really. Yeah, no, it's true. And on the flip side, if you go with this greedy opener and the Bat Rider has a good time in the off lane, if you can't really zone him out, at least not past the first couple minutes, it can pay big dividends. You got an Enigma who's free farm in the jungle. You can get an easy 10 minute mech. And if Bat Rider gets a timely level six, then you can really have a fight around your ultimates with a, a nice timing and get some momentum. So we'll see what they take out in the next banning phase here. OD Enchantress is still in the pool. I reckon she may be high on the list. And oh, well, there she is. Radiant team ban. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I have some... That's okay. I guess Dota decided to swap my default mic. That's just fun for no apparent reason. Oh, good. That sounds like Dota. Good old Dota TV, man. I'll just have, like, both mics going at the same time. One for Dota TV, <laughs> one for the stream. We'll just go with that. Five I like it. Remaining. I like the way you roll. Yeah. Apologies, Dota TV. Well, SG Rejects could go for, Reserve like, time. some some pushing power here. They've got the beginnings of... Of something that could work with that. Ooh, Sven. We saw a first pick Sven yesterday. I think in that second game. Very, very bold. Sven's very popular in this region. They've got all kinds of fun strats, you know. I, I'm a big fan of the whole sending a random-ass carry to the mid lane. You know, usually it's a PL or a jug. <laughs> which isn't too bad because they have escape, you know. You got the doppelganger, you got the spin, so they do pretty well in the mid lane. Yeah. Uh, but that carried over. Like We saw a couple teams kind of pulling out at the majors, even when there wasn't an SEA team involved. A little bit of Chinese doing it. A little bit of... Yeah. No, I think some of the well, Euros even grabbed it up. It's a cool strat because it, obviously it doesn't work every game, but people get stuck in this mindset of you have to play like an in-lane dominator or a semi-carry that can also dominate the lane. 
And in the rare instances where that doesn't happen, if you can get away with a hard carry in basically a solo roll in the mid with supports rotating in and out, if you can get the farm, it's great for your team. Like, it, it opens up a whole nother level of greed where you can erupt in the mid game. But, you know, it's kind of high risk, high reward style play. If it, if it doesn't work out, you've got a PL in the mid who can't really do shit to control the tempo of the game. But... I like these picks from the SG Rejects here. Beastmaster coming out. A little bit of vision with that Hawk and Boar to scout things out. They've got Wave of Terror as well. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll see some sun Sunstrike play. You can always hope. Yeah, that was a big combo for, like, many patches. Just the whole Roar and Sunstrike. And so far, they're drafting up really well up against uh, the side of Fnatic. Like, you have the Invoker uh, as well as the Ventral Spirit who counter the Batrider fairly well. Uh, you can just, even a short range Tornado is excellent when he uh, jumps in, lasts anybody else. And then, of course, you have mm -hmm. the Swap for the Lasso, which is the Five best. You got the Roar, BKB piercing up against the Black Hole, uh, as well as some solid stuns. You know, just the Q and the IR. Ventral Spirit can help take down that Witch Doctor channel. So... Yeah. It's looking pretty good. I like it. Uh, you're right. They've got a lot of tools to deal with these two big channeling ultimates from Enigma and Witch Doctor. Fnatic do have a lot of team fight, though. And it's not just about the power with the ultimates. I think it's also the sustainability they've got. They're certainly going to grab an early mech. I'd be shocked if the Enigma doesn't get one. And then you've got the uh, Voodoo Restoration as well. So their five-man is still going to be pretty damn scary. Like You know, you get caught up in the black hole aspect of Enigma, but his pushing prowess is really good in those early levels. Yeah, one thing you see a lot of teams go for would be the Tidehunter in this scenario. Uh, that would force your bat right into the mid lane, but you really need something that's kind of that bigger AoE if you want to rely on the Black Holes to do something. Um, for now, it looks like it, obviously it's going to be the Lone Druid. I'm not sure if that'll be uh, in their safe lane or heading into the uh, into the off lane, but a couple, yeah. couple different scenarios you can go for. Or even the mid if you're finding it a hard matchup. We saw quite a few mid Lone Druids come out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, that that kind of semi-carry lane dominator for the mid. The bear is so hard to deal with early on. With a skilled micro player, it's it's hard to deal with once he gets once that bear gets uh, a couple of levels. His damage goes up quite a bit. A lot of flexibility for the fanatic draft. That is one advantage they have here going in. Really hard to predict how they want to set up these lanes. Reserve time. And I'm actually just looking. It looks like they haven't played the bear all that much it was quite a while ago and it was uh ohio that picked it up the last time so it wasn't the off lane see if that's Ooh. what the case is being. oh that's a lot of push that is a lot of push now so if invoker goes exhort goes for like uh, midas necro book you've got summons there you've got the boar from the beast master venge aura for extra damage now the death prophet ult remaining. They just need a nice sustained support to round it out, like a Dazzle or something. And this is one scary death ball. Yeah, then uh, living the Tidehunter from Fnatic. Uh, there's a couple nice options for Fnatic still left in terms of position one. The Juggernaut uh, might be the, the big one, kind of. Like, if they get a little bit of a roll going, you can even see the early push coming out from their side. Uh, they may want something that helps with the attack speed, though. Ten seconds hmm. remaining. Let's just go position one Legion Commander. I'm sure that's the play. Five seconds. Position no. one Legion Commander. Yeah, just slap. All right, we'll go with the get rid of that Legion Ursa. Commander. Yeah. Wow. All right, I'm done. See ya. Going home. Wow. Yep. <laughs> well, look at you, Mr. Mott Pax. Very impressive. Good call. Uh, all right, that's it. I don't have to cast any more Dota for the rest of my life. It is really good here, though. There's a it's lot so of solid debuffs with the bear. on SG Reject. Just having that cleanse is going to help a lot. Cleanse the Silence, Venge Stun, Cold Snap. Pretty handy. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, so what do the Rejects uh... take here? I, I still think Dazzle is not a bad option to have against the LC. You already have the Venge, I guess, to kind of break up faceless duels. Void. They go with a Faceless Void. Okay. Oh, the so greed. How are they going to set up these lanes? Uh, I guess it's going to be this whole support Beastmaster thing we've seen. The Iron Talon works out okay. We've seen a couple okay. SCA teams go for it. You just play it like a Night Stalker. You just head right, right into the right. jungle. Yeah, it's like the Go Black style kind of. You can make any strength here, like the, the Abaddon or anybody like that who has decent damage can basically jungle with an Iron Talon. All right. I'll be curious to see how that works out. I have not cast a game with the, the, the greedy position for Beastmaster. I mean, is it does he come online fast enough for it to be pretty good? 
Uh, I think so, yeah. Uh, it kind of depends. The The way that it gets into trouble is if there's a lot of pressure on your safe lane and they need more help, and then you just can't do anything. Like, a Night Stalker is pretty relevant at level 3, but in comparison, a Beastmaster doesn't do all that much. Uh, you'll be, like, spamming your boars just to keep the farm up, so you really want to just kind of hit 6 totally undisturbed. So, if you can, though, uh, it is very good in terms of, like, the overall timing and, and jungling. It's one of the better heroes for just solo youngling away. Okay. I, I guess, actually, not only the extra damage from the boar, but also that debuff makes it a lot easier. You can kind of kite stuff around. I think it slows their attack speed as well. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, both teams with very greedy lineups here. So what are you thinking here, Trent? What's, uh, what's going down? Who's got the advantage? Who's taking it? Do SGR have a chance against the heavy favorites here? You know, I didn't even look at the odds for this match. Let me, let me pull up Dota 2 lines. I can only imagine... What, what it is for this game. It's probably like a 90-10. That's my guess. 88-12. close. Pretty damn close. Yeah. Uh, well, I like it. I think SGR, like, obviously, they're coming in pretty huge underdogs. But I think they drafted up really well up against them. You know, they saw the greed of the Enigma. They understood what was happening. And so, uh, to contest that, they went with a really greedy Beastmaster. And so, I don't think that they're being, like, kind of taken advantage of. I think they understand what the game plan for Fnatic is. So, although... It's kind of crazy in terms of the uh, the odds there. They have a pretty good chance. That their heroes definitely give them a chance to win. I think. Yeah, and of course, this is the team that came through the Singapore qualifier or a Singaporean qualifier, I guess. Um, so I have not seen them play. I don't. I don't know these names. I'm I'm pumped to see what they can bring to the table here. So their lane setup will be fairly straightforward as we talked about. Oh, this Death Prophet set. She looks like uh, a character from an anime that I don't know the name of. <laughs> If only Travis was here. If, <laughs> yeah, if only. <laughs> Get him, Ray. And Madota crashed. All right, we're off to a good start today. Well, you guys are going to have to enjoy the Zyori cam for a second here as I get back into the game. Give us Dota Radio here, yeah, Mon. Or, don't uh, worry. So far, nothing nothing too much happened. I was hanging out. We still got 16 seconds till the runes are going to be spawning. So everyone's just kind of chilling. Radiant are making their way to the bottom rune. And the Dire will be taking up that top one, so... Nice. Say, okay. Tykes. Looks like Mushi. Yeah, he'll be able to head top. Ooh, Faces Void's going to contest the rune. Nah, he gets stunned up, though. And so it's going to be the Lone Druid mid, by the looks of it here. Got some pretty intense items here. Plenty of regen. You should reboot Dota Radio, man. I'll sell you the domain for 50 bucks. 50, 50 bucks? That's you, you think that's worth it? Huh? I think that's a that's a steal, man. That's a great <laughs> domain name. It is really good. I remember you were very pleased when you got it. I was. I couldn't believe it wasn't taken. But you know, I, I thought that was one of those investments for the future. You know, five years, people would be like, <laughs> "Man, Dota Radio, I got to get my hands on that." But it turns out the demand is not quite there. So all right, I'm, I'm finally still back trying in. to sell my Pokemon cards, dude. Yeah. <laughs> my Beanie Babies are next on the list. Oh God. Oh, mine did too. My basement got flooded. It's awful, man. Yeah. Uh, we also have instant replay technology for this broadcast, so uh, look out. It's uh, a disaster, so it's good. It's You know, I have a newfound respect for Pimpmuckle, seeing how he manages all this shit while he's still doing in-game obs. It's pretty nuts. Yeah, and he still trolls chat too. I don't really know how he does it. Yeah, I, I actually don't either. It's It's disgusting. So, uh oh Cask up top, bouncing around on Faceless Void here. He's got a time walk. He'll use it. Mitigates the damage. Man, what a cheeseburger of a hero. Silly little guy. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a pretty rough lane for him, though, just because it is the Witch Doctor. Like, the Maledict's considered one of the better things. They'll deal with him just because it is damage over time, obviously. But the uh, overwhelming odds, not very good. Just one big nuke. You know, it's a massive animation. And then you just kind of press Q, and you're like, oh, later. So... Legion Commander going to be needing that Witch Doctor's help. So even though uh, SGR have the greedy jungler with this Beastmaster that we've been talking about, the Enigma, one of the fastest junglers in the game, if not the fastest if you get the perfect rotations going on. So Fnatic are well-equipped here to match greed with perhaps even superior greed. Lone Druid, he'll be able to scale pretty nicely. Really, all of their heroes move towards the late game pretty well. And I guess you could say the same thing for SGR, which is... Part of why I'm so excited to get into this mid game, man. I feel like there's going to be a lot of good team fighting as both teams are so reliant on, like, getting that 5v5 all put together. 
Yeah, we have like a, a lone druid, a legion commander, and a bat rider. These these are three heroes that are just completely waiting on those bigger items to do anything at all. It's not like you're a gyrocopter who hits six and does something. It's like you need the uh, radiance and midas you're looking for on your bear generally. You need that blink dagger and that first smoke there on the bat. Kind of the same thing with legion commander. Either you go for the, it might be like a blade mail first to kind of pair up with the bat rider, not worry about the blink, but you think so? Possibly, but the Blink Dagger is also just something. It depends on like how much you're going to be grouping as well. If she wanted to go for maybe more aura-based items, and they're just going to like yeah. hit that mech timing and go. Yeah, the nice thing about the Blade Mail first is it's just such a value item in terms of stats. The build-up is really easy. You get some extra mana pool for harassment. You get some extra armor from the Chain Mail to survive better. It's just an all-around good value item, and if you can get it in a, a timely manner... Just makes you scary in general for the right clicks and kind of less likely that you get manned up upon before you're really ready to fight. Is the Blink Dagger Rush still a pretty common build to see on, on the LC in, in the SEA region? We'll see smokes picked up simultaneously by the junglers here as well. Kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's still really common. It's just kind of, I think, a matchup thing. And it's, in fact, this game, it might be better just because there's not any really heavy right clickers. Oh man, that bear is almost getting that death problem. But that was yeah. so close. She moves into the tree line and fogs it, but mid one living up to his name here. My god. Actually, not out CSing her too hard. Gets a lucky entangling claws, and she gets locked in place. God, this damage is just disgusting. Soul Siphon on the bear will keep her alive. She pushes the bear back. Might be able to get it. 20 HP. And old Alfredo makes it back to the tower. Small stroke of luck there for this lone druid. That would have been a big oh. bounty for the DP. Oh, it's so huge. Like, this early on in the game, 300 gold. It's kind of crazy it doesn't scale. More than a tier 1 tower. <laughs> it really that's, should that's scale. It's more than a, a hero. Bit. God. She's not really getting dominated that hard, though. 18 and 8 on the Lone Druid, 14 and 2 on the DP. So, it's she's holding her own. Really not too bad. Smoke rotation now from the Beastmaster. Z-Red trying to do a wraparound on Ohio. He's got the Arcane Rune in the bottle, but only level 4. No Flaming Lasso or frame break, a break to work with here. Level 4 on the Beastmaster as well. There's the Cold Snap. They've got quite a few auto attacks. Sun Strikes on the money and Chains draws first blood. My boy on the Invoker. That was, that was pretty solid. You don't often see that early Beastmaster rotation, but just the fact that they have an Invoker in the safe lane, it's a pretty easy setup considering the huge range of Cold Snap. It's actually like totally massive when you look at it. So yeah. just kind of rolling in with the boars. Oh, I think that... Was not really expecting that as the Bat Rider. Definitely not. You don't think of Beastmaster pre level 6 as having much ganking potential, but Cold Snap makes pretty much anything possible. Just having that extra auto attack from the boar paired with that mini stun makes it an easy kill to set up for the Sun Strike. We'll see the Enigma now smoke up and try and get a gank going of his own. He is level 6, has that point in Black Hole, but unfortunately not going to find the opening he's looking for. Ray's now moved into the jungle. He's playing it pretty safe. Level 6, no point in Exorcism going for this. Uh, Spirit Siphon Crypt Swarm build that we see pretty commonly, and it looks like this smoke will be a dud for Enigma. 343 wasting a fair bit of time here, really hoping to find an opening, but we'll just head back to the jungle as mid one continues to farm here. Even Ohio was hanging out there. They're feeling frisky. So Enigma has farmed a bit more than the Beastmaster, though. Uh, the levels are the, the bigger disparity, I think. Only level 4 on Z-Red still, and that black hole is online now. Yeah, it's just completely absurd how fast he can push, honestly. Um, that little bit of a time in the mid lane, though, can be given a pretty big bonus over the beast mass. So you can imagine he'd be probably halfway to his mech, honestly, by now. Ohio, down bottom, gets soloed by chains. My god. It's just a cold snap ice wall combo. Ohio oversteps his bounds, and chains finds that last auto attack for a kill. This is going to be one hell of a quick Midas here for this invoker. Two kills, first blood, and free farm in the safe lane. This is the dream. Yeah, Ohio's been playing pretty aggressive this whole game, honestly. He's been really in there, like, disrupting a little bit with the supports, challenging some of the jungle camps down near the rune as well. But, you uh, you know, there's there's certain mid or certain off laners, you know, they go, they play a little deep, they die a few times, but they still get a lot out of the lane. And uh, I guess that's kind of the style he's going for, but he really needs to get up to that level 6, and he's yeah. nowhere near a blink dagger. Yeah. He went for Bottle instead of the Tranquils as well. So he's going to be a, a little bit slower, less mobile. See if he can control the runes. That'll make a, a pretty big difference. Void having an okay time, though. Better than the Bat Rider at this point. Hasn't died yet and closing in on level 6. Just about 20 XP away as he finishes clearing up this creep. Though they might go for this. Enigma now has the Black Hole. Not going to use it. Instead, it's a Chronosphere the other way. Sunstrike flying through. Will be off the mark. Oh. 
probably would have been a kill if it connected on just the Enigma. The Avenge couldn't get there in time with a stun. Level 3 Magic Missile as well. Close call, but they stop the push, they keep the tower alive, and they also stop the Enigma from setting up on the Void. So, nice counter pressure the other way. Nice to uh, prevent Fnatic from just getting a free tower. And oh god, the lone Ooh, druid. There's no he mana gets... bottom for chains. Oh, Ohio, you're not going to go on that? Yeah, that's why I was looking for the setup down there. Ohio actually taking a lot of damage from the Forge Spirits. He's still not level 6. But lone druid just gets picked in the jungle here. Not even a Beastmaster Roar, just a magic missile setup. And auto attacks plus all that damage from the, uh, the boar going to be enough to find the kill. Alright. Well, where is this... What, what do we got here? 343. Three. Alright, he's getting towards that mechanism. I just feel like once that comes out, they can actually start to do something, and then it's kind of on Ray for this first exorcism for the side of the Radiant, because other than that, you know, Invoker Midas, he's just farming it up. This, uh, this face is void with that first wasted chrono. Uh, well, wasted in a sense, but uh, it just means there's a full other minute before he can really contribute to anything, and yeah. I'm not sure, like, how this rotation's gonna work just because the side of the dire aren't really gonna be grouped up so i guess they're just gonna have to wait and see uh when fnac want to push uh oh void blank. up top almost Ooh. gets caught able to scoot away before mushi can get off the duel mushi did rush the blink dagger that was the reveal and i'm kind of surprised he wasn't able to get the duel off there looks like Dyer's he had, it looked like he had ample time to do it bottom tower. yeah i don't know if he was thinking, waiting for the black hole or something Radiant first if they were just gonna commit it for the single kill pretty standard Radiant stuff just you know throw it out get that one kill yeah well, they do end up finishing off the tower. Mushi gets the last hit there, so still gets a nice gold gain, but not what he was hoping for. Smoke rotation now from SGR, moving through the bottom rune up near the Dire Ancients, looking for a wraparound on poor Ohio here. He has found his level 6, but still pretty susceptible to these rotations. The tier 1 tower falls, and Volker gets credit for that one. Trying to soften up the Bat Rider, but just not quite forward enough for them to reveal the smoke yet. Uh-oh. There we go. They find him. There's the Primal Roar. They're in pretty deep, but the Sunstrike connects. They get the Magic Missile, and it's another kill on the Bat Rider. Z-Red on the Beastmaster, getting credit for that one. Nice rotation, and they're going to chip at this Tier 2 as well. Up top now, top Black lane. Hole onto Faceless Void. Three on one, and this time they find the kill. Looks like the duel was used, but no damage for Mushi. So again, not ideal for Fnatic. They trade one for one around the map. Both offlaners hit the deck, but Fnatic could have gotten just a little bit more out of that. And it's just starting to hit that 10-minute mark. So I got quite a few idlons here, but the Invoker did TP, ta or TP home after that gank, so he can at least push this out a little bit. And, and you really want to start getting that duel damage going, but Mushi, he'll, he'll move around. I guess Venge, she's still sending at 700 HP. It's hard. Yeah. You often have like the full team kind of group up and help out this Legion commander, but you're just not going to be able to get that from this Batrider or the Lone Druid for a long time. It kind of feels like it's going to be like 3v5. Yeah, it's pretty scary. Like the, the Fnatic Greed is a very different style where they actually have to farm. And SGR kind of have the option. You know, Invoker goes greedy with a Midas, but he still contributes a lot. He's 2-0 and 1. He does a lot of damage. Just being able to farm and contribute the Sun Strike is pretty significant compared to the Lone Druid, who at this point, he's just stationed in the lane. I mean, he doesn't come to fights because what's he going to do? Throw his Midas at him? I mean, maybe you get some entangling claws, but he's not going to be in fighting form for at least another 5-10 minutes. And even then, he's still going to be a bit underwhelming compared to what he will be. Yeah, and then you compare that to just like Chronosphere plus Exorcism at essentially any level is still an insane amount of damage. Don't yeah. really need any items to make it any better, so I, I like this. They're applying a little bit of pressure top, seeing that the what's going on in the bottom lane and just hoping for some sort of a counter initiation because definitely their best way to make something happen in these fights. Yeah, and Fnatic will also have to deal with that cooldown disadvantage they're at. Black Hole, the longest in the game at 200 seconds. Even the Chronosphere, you know, 130 at level 1. Uh, the DP ulti, 145 seconds at all levels. So SGR will be able to trade ultimates a little bit more regularly with Fnatic and, and still be able to skirmish. Oh, <laughs> speaking of trading ultimates, Bocarino with a Flubberino in the top lane there. That's a wasted chrono. Just barely misses that TP interrupt. Yeah, usually not too big of a deal. Might come at a little bit of a bad time, though, because the mechanism has been delivered over to the Enigma. So if they want to start pressuring that mid lane, might see that happen. We do have a roar ready with the Hawks. Both scaling this all in the mid lane. Yeah, so they do end up trading Tier 1 Towers as well. Tier 1's in the top and bottom lanes uh, both end up going down here. Enigma pushing down bottom, Bocarino. They know he doesn't have the... Actually, do they Do they know he doesn't have the Chrono? I don't think they saw it. It was in the tree line. Yeah, it's hard to tell as to when, like, the TP dissipates. And, yeah, you know. so they might not be aware, and uh, SGR might be able to just sort of posture as such. 
and uh, keep them at bay. Enigma still doesn't have, have his black hole available for another 35 seconds also. But we'll see how they handle this here. Ohio, 1,400 gold, two-thirds of the way towards the Blink Dagger. Tranquil Boots up now. And they're looking for an opening on Bocarino if he steps too far forward. They do have that lasso. Looks like he's not going to fall for the trap. Drums up yeah. on the Beastmaster as well. Brown boot drum, man. He's got some Ooh. nice stats going. All right, they are ready to start pushing. Drums up on the Death Prophet, up on the Beastmaster as well. Yeah. Many bongos. <laughs> start their own little band going here. Yeah, it's a... Dude, it's a nice little... Invoker, uh... what is this? Triple bongos. What? Wow. Uh oh up top, Ohio. That's a meatball off the mark. Okay. Off the beat oh. of the bongo <laughs> band. Three drums. Three drums and a Midas. That's like... He's... Uh oh, Beastmaster, he's primal roaring up top, Ohio, he's in a world of trouble. That's another kill on the Beastmaster. <laughs> bottom right, pardon me, on the Batrider by the Beastmaster. Black Hole deployed down bottom, they'll get the kill on the Faceless Void. Mushi again, uses the duel too early, doesn't get the bonus damage. I can't, but I thought that was going to be it for sure. I was like, there's no way this one misses, no. All right. You know, that's like the third time now we've seen Batrider and Faceless Void die on opposite sides of the map in like the same, fa <laughs> uh, same kind of fashion. These poor offlaners, man. <laughs> this game has turned into, all right guys, let's just kill the offlaners and, and farm. That's <laughs> both teams with the same strategy. I like it. Uh, see, the, the triple drum is weird, though. It's a really great value item at this stage in the game. It gives you a great bump in stats, that extra attack speed, but it doesn't really scale that well in terms of the cost. If you think about that investment, it's like about the same as a Midas or something. So it, you don't normally see this many picked up. There's, there's more of a balance between farming for late game and getting these early game items so that you can have a presence. And I, I yeah. guess SGR are okay, because they'll all scale pretty well, and they have a Midas on the Invoker, but it, it seems like kind of an odd choice, given that this game's been relatively passive, all things considered. 5-2 to two at 14 minutes is not a heavy yeah, kill a nice score. Chrono we'll see up Ohio. top, Chrono onto Ohio, sets it up for the Sun Strike, and they get another one. This time, Ventral Spirit gets credit for the kill. They'll just back out, happy with their pick. I think, like, people were kind of miffed about the double drums that have been coming out in every single game. It's like, what is this? Why are there two drums? And then Triple everyone kind of got over it, you know? And they're like, all right, like, we can have two drums. That's fine. But now, now three drums? I don't know. This is pushing it for me. But... They're pushing the envelope here. Yeah. These you know, crazy SA players stuff. and their bongo bands. Like, where's the Necro for this Beastmaster? Or maybe a Blink Dagger to help out with the initiation of the, the Chronosphere, help set some stuff up. Because he has to still get a Vlad's by the looks of what he's building right now. And, yeah, dude, his blank like, dagger is a ways away. If Beastmaster rushed a necro book and Invoker got a necro book instead of drums, like they would be doing huge damage right now. He's gonna go blink dagger, some mobility. He is kind of their uh, setup initiator. I mean, of course, Beastmaster has been using the primal roar to throw off these fights, but there's also been a lot of just cold snap, uh, forge spirit auto attacks to get somebody out of position. We'll see Z Red speaking of positioning, wrong place, wrong time. Duel by Mushi. This one may finally yield some damage, and it does. Winner, winner, chicken dinner is uh, awarded here, and he gets his plus 10. Looks like blade mail will be the choice now after that blink dagger. All right, woohoo! Legion Commander doing Legion Commander things. Yep, much needed there. Lone True is actually in great shape. He has been farming away, and he's now number two on net worth. He's had the Midas for some while, and 3,700 gold, so that will be a, a Radiance, it looks like, uh, coming around the corner. Mid one as well as three four three pushing this tier two down bottom. It's just chains defending. They'll use the glyph, and the bear getting pretty low. They'll start to back out as they see some of these heroes rotating over. They do have a nice observer ward here as they see Bocarino rotating that faceless void down the bottom lane. Finally, the blink dagger up on Ohio though. That's a big pickup for Fnatic for sure. Yeah, it hasn't. Uh... Hasn't mattered too much. They kept the mid tier one, which is pretty nice. Of course, they did lose their entire top lane, so we might see quite a few jungle ganks and smokes coming out from the side of the Singapore rejects. But mid one, like, uh, I don't know. He just hasn't felt pressured at all. He died that one time, but other than that, I haven't really felt like his life was ever in danger. No. And he's essentially freely made his way around the entire map working on this Radiance. Yeah, they've just kind of been ignoring him. He's got the Relic now, just picked it up on the Courier, and the grind for the recipe continues. So looking at probably like an 18 Dyer's minute Radiance tower Midas. Definitely not bad. Middle tower has Tier 1 fallen. tower mid falls. Chains will get credit for that. Smoke behind him. Bocarino looking for the opening here. 
Looks like it will be that Vlad's indeed on the void. Getting pretty close to it. Smoke gets broken. Ohio, Ohio. Up on the high ground. <laughs> uses the Firefly. Blink Dagger grabs the void with the lasso. But is there any follow-up? No! Oh, Mushi, Mushi can't get the duel off. Oh, man. Bottom lane. Lone Druid doing some split push. We'll be able to grab that tier 2 tower. Gets the last hit with the bear. And will escape basically scot-free. Again, I can't believe Mushi couldn't grab that. It seemed like he had ample time. Maybe thinking they would deploy the black hole for that, but... I think he's trying to, like, min-max it a little bit too hard, you know what I mean? He's waiting for, like, that last moment of the lasso or something like that, and he's like, I gotta get the press the attack off every time, but you're committing your death ward, like, now that ends up getting wasted, and... Mushi's not gonna play Legion Commander for, like, three games after this. Yeah, it... Uh-oh, speaking of Mushi, mid lane, he gets caught here, Meatball connects this time, and it's an easy setup for the Radiant. Primal Roar to get it started, and... Man, blink of an eye, he just goes full zero. It really just feels like one of these situations where you're watching a hero and, like, how it was supposed to work in this draft and what you were aiming to get done, and it's just... It really doesn't seem like it's the pick's fault. It really is the execution that's just not yeah, coming out here. It, it's like, really unfortunate. It's like I, those first two kills that he secured the kill but missed the duel victory, I didn't see the early setup because there were other kills that we were watching before that, but it seems like now he's trying to compensate too hard. I'm like, okay, I can't use it right away. I need to wait. I need to make sure I get the duel damage, but... The opportunity cost of not getting that kill because you waited too long is so much higher. You know, the priority is killing the enemy and then getting the damage after that. So hopefully he can shake it off and get back in the zone here. Lone Druid does have his uh, Radiance completed now. So Fnatic have another tool at their disposal. will definitely help in these team fights. These heroes still, like, you know, Void, Venge, still relatively susceptible to the burn over time. Now that that's up, you can see they're smoking up, because now mid one can actually fight, and this whole time of, like, yeah. easy tower pickings around the map, as well as the potential of Roshan, are kind of gone here, so... And even that 8% really missed chance from the Radiance burn makes a difference in these team fights. Like, that's a lot of man damage mitigation over the course of a 5v5. We'll see a lasso. It gets broken right away. Nice swap from the Venge. Now the Chrono connects on three. Beautifully done. Bocarino sets up the kill on Batrider first. Lone Druid getting low. Mushi as well. Now the Black Hole comes. Maybe they can get the kill on Venge. They can, but where's the follow-up damage? This Death Prophet just going to town all over Fnatic, and they're getting cleaned up. There's four on the deck. It's just the mid one left alive. Lone Druid will try to TP on the other side of the tree line. He almost makes it out, but can't quite get it. Ray secures the triple kill, and it's SGR that come out big in their own jungle. Two for five. The Radiant Smoke, a disaster for Team Fnatic. Man, that was all, like, under the ward vision of Fnatic. They knew exactly where that fight was going to happen, how to take it, but... What a, what a sick chrono, considering they didn't have any wards up. He doesn't have the Blink Dagger yet. He's only relying on the Vlads and his time walk to get himself in there. That was some impressive stuff, and then, you know, Death Prophet, press R. P pretty good hero, I think. Yeah, I mean, there were a couple things that went perfectly there for SGR. And I'm going to try to get the, the technology here, Trent, the instant replay. Do we replay. have it? $6 million technology? Um, I think, I think we might, if I can find the folder. Oh, God. I can't, <laughs> the problem is I can't control the camera while I'm... <laughs> All right, let's watch Ohio. He's looking really good today. Super good. Super good. All right. So, team fight. When did it begin? Oh, yeah. I've got the power, baby. All right. Here oh, we go, nice. Trent. Instant replay time. So, it starts off smoke from Fnatic. They're by far the aggressors coming into this fight. You talked about the ward vision. That's their ward that they're walking on top of here. They get a good initiation with the lasso, or at least it looks like one, but the Venge is in the perfect position, instantly counters it. Death Ward does not do damage through Chrono anymore, so Net has to cancel his ult. The Chrono sets up the kill on the Bat Rider, and then this whole time, DP is just standing off to the side like, Hey, y'all! I got my little ghosts out! What's going on? And Fnatic are just bathing in it, getting worked by Ray. He gets the triple kill at the end, mid one's TP gets interrupted. My god, that was just beautiful execution from SGR. They just countered him completely. The swap started off, and everything just spiraled from there. By the time they used the black hole from the Enigma, it was already too late. From that, it didn't have enough damage to follow up. And them having to stand and fight in the Death Prophet ult while the black hole was going on was the nail in the coffin that just crippled their whole team. Yeah, I mean, when you have that uh, that Immortal going on, it's a, it's a damn fine-looking black hole. But it's true. It was a little bit, you know, too little, too late. Yeah. Follow-up damage just wasn't there. You know, that I think Fnatic could take more of a, a long, drawn-out fight. You know, oh, oh, Ray down bottom? Oh, God. They get a pick there. Much-needed one. Lasso sets it up into the Death Ward. 
Very nice. That's huge. That's like free fourth uh, fourth staff here for Ohio. Yeah, it's a 1,500 net worth swing on that one kill. That, that's okay. You know, that, that, that seems all right. Pretty yeah. solid. But, you know, if it's more of like a long, drawn-out engagement, the Radiance burn kind of adds up over time. But when you're in a big, like, straight-up 5v5 like that, Hernandez just don't have the, the big damage for it. You know, at least not yet. If they can't kill somebody in the lasso, I think you basically have to disengage. They're going to move into the Roche Pit, though. This is kind of scary. We're going to look at Radiant Vision. They know exactly Chronos what's going on. They've got up. the Hawk to scat it out. They've got a Chronosphere. It gets used by Bocarino. 3-4-3 three, three in a lot of trouble, but the follow-up damage isn't quite there. The cast now moving around. Mushi gets off a duel, but another swap. Oh, the got Spear and always in the right place at the right time. Now Z-Rad off to the backside. May get soloed by Mushi. He finally falls. Now they get the Vengeful Spirit as well, and Fnatic will take the fight. They kill two. DP was dead from earlier, and now they will be able to secure the Roche. Jeez, I was a little worried there. 343, three, he got thrown up on the clip. Yo, oh man, that's on strike. That would have been godlike. So close. Either way. Uh, <laughs> well, right when that fight was turned around, he got pushed up on the cliff, and I was like, oh, the black hole, it's back off cooldown. But it's all right. Now they get to save it. And securing themselves the row shot, and, and suddenly Fnatic, after that wipe, are just completely right back in this game. Oh, yeah, you look at the gold graph. It was about a time. 5k net worth lead for SGR, and it's definitely dipping down. You see Bocarino in a lot of trouble here. Flame Break interrupts it right into the Lasso Death Ward. Mushi manages to get off the duel at the last second and gets awarded an extra bit of damage. Now up to 24 at the 24 minute mark. Oh, sweet poetic justice for Mushi. He's finally found his footing, and they have broken this game wide open, Trent. Yeah, so suddenly it just, it's all, you know, coming up Fnatic here, and you start to look at these heroes that are over on the side of the radiant, like your Beastmaster with his drums, he's still trying to build into something more Beastmastery, either Necro or Blink Dagger, you know, kind of something, I feel like he's kind of lost, you know, and they don't have this big push, they're, they're not actually acting on what you kind of expected coming out of this draft, and so he's, he's just a, a lonely man and his beasts. <laughs> a lonely man with his beasts. That is, I don't, I don't know. Possibly the saddest way to explain the existence of the Beastmaster, but it's true. He's just a, a lonely old guy with a big beard and a whole bunch of pets. He's like the, uh, what's that guy in the Hobbit that got, that's got the bird poop on his shoulder. Oh, uh, I don't know, but, but yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Yep. He seemed like a nice guy, but he was a little bit loony. I'm not gonna He's lie. He's like Dota's then, cat lady. Oh, Enigma. He ain't got no Blink Dagger, Z-Red, he's on the hunt, but oh, he's only got brown boots, poor little guy. That would have been a freebie. That Enigma was way overextended. I wonder if he is going to go right into the Blink Dagger. I mean, I assume so by the fact that he hasn't picked up any of the pieces of the Necro. Uh, I think, it's not yeah. the most common thing, though. Yeah, I think they're probably, oh, there it is. They're prioritizing the initiation. I have to say, this ZC, ZC, ZC guy has played one hell of a bench so far. He's had a, a number of really clutch swaps that have set up these fights uh, for success for us. Oh, he needs another one. Lasso, here we go. Ray pulled into no man's land right up onto the high ground near the Ancients. Swap now from ZC, ZC. Bocarino comes flying in. Venge will have to concede her life, but now Ray manages to get off the ultimate. There's the Chronosphere. Hey, y'all, the ghosts are out again. Mushi taking big damage. There's the Black. Black Hole, Bocarino becomes the winner. Mushi's got a bad duel. They survive the Black Hole. The Yule Scepter, Ray goes down, but does big damage beforehand. Now Chains on the back line. Can he clean this up? It looks like the answer is no. Beastmaster's gone down. Voids had to head for the hills. Chains blinks out, but the bear's on the way. Tornado will interrupt. Get it in the air, Alfredo. One for three. Fnatic take another fight, and this time they're able to kill the Death Prophet. You can just see the difference in the lone druid. Just the Hyperstone alone, this bear does so much more damage. It looked good. I mean, you were right. The big swap came out. It saved the Death Prophet. She got herself in there, but... Oh, no. Not Bocarino, too. Not Bocarino. You were so young. Too brave, Void. Too brave. But, uh, no, they did a better job just focusing down that Death Prophet this time. You can see they actually wanted to commit one of these bigger ultimates to her specifically this time. Not allow the same thing to happen. And yeah. If it doesn't go so gloriously well through her ultimate, it's much harder to win that fight. It looked like for a second, like, she lived and got off the Yules, and I had that moment of, oh, God, is she going to live and turn this fight around? Are we going to see an ultra yeah. kill? And then she died, so it was not the case. But Yeah, I was thinking it was going to be one of those times she comes back down at, like, 75% HP suddenly all again, and you're like, oh, damn it. <laughs> yeah, man, look at that gold graph, though. SGR were in control for a big part of this game, and it's just complete res completely spiraled the other way. Now about a 4,500 net worth lead for Fnatic. I think it's going to update a little more here in the, the coming moments. But 
They're definitely feeling good. This Witch Doctor picked up the uh, Ogre Club first to keep his options open, but now moving into the Aghanim Scepter. Has the Staff of Wizardry and another 1,000 gold to play around with. A lot of big items coming out in general. Now the Vanguard, one step closer to the Crimson Guard for the Enigma. LC, close to the BKB. And the Bat Rider now has the Aether Lens. Ah, the dreaded monocle on the Bat Rider that gives him that lasso from afar. If that Venge could have gotten a swap right away to break the lasso so DP wasn't isolated so far away from the team, I think SGR actually could have taken a pretty good fight there. But the swap came out just a little bit too late and forced SGR to fight that on Fnatic's terms, you know. Yeah, had he been level 11, I think he would have got it for sure. But once yeah. the four staff is out, it's just so much harder to actually... Uh, get that swap out when you're still level well level six ultimate in this case. Yeah, yeah, it's a, a fair point. The the level six ult uh, feels a bit underwhelming at, at this stage in the game, no doubt. Oh, oh assault cross also for the lone druid man. It feels like everyone on Fnatic has picked up a core item since that last team fight, and now their farm is just starting to erupt. The invoker is keeping up. Compliments of that hand of Midas. He's completed the agonims, and now probably a hex coming with that ultimate orb, but. He's the only one. Death Prophet's starting to fall off, and after that, you're seeing a big fall off in farm. Beastmaster and Void, both pretty underwhelming. Blink Dagger, and then Drum Vlads. Not bad items to have. Another we're at the 30-minute mark. You really need to start seeing those big-ticket items come out to keep up. Yeah, uh, I really like that items they're going for, too. Like, just between the AC, uh, you're getting that Enigma Crimson Guide we've seen picked up a couple times lately, but obviously going to be very solid up against the current lineup of SGR. And, it's a well, smoke. They're going to smoke up, though. Smoke what, what they a have pancake. Right now? What is the dream setup here? I guess five man chrono into some tornado, you know, invoker spells. Yeah, that's pretty much. Um, I think the dream is just to catch one. If they can make it a 4v5 straight away, then they can take the fight. They just need to get the power play. You know, they need Fnatic to retreat. I think that's really all they need to achieve. Once Death Prophet has her ult on, it's pretty much established that they can't kill her easily. And Fnatic have that feeling of, oh shit, it's 4v5. They already killed our carry. Let's retreat. This isn't our fight. That's the money play for SGR. That's when DP can chase them down with her Yules and do big damage. That's where they can really capitalize on their Blink Daggers and their swaps. It's hard for Fnatic to actually retreat and get away from SGR. But on the flip side, if Fnatic have the... Uh, kind of commanding power and they get the initiation, then what can SGR do? If their DP dies with their ult on, the team fight's basically over. I, I just noticed that smoke was totally under the wards when uh, SGR smoked up as well. Oh, yeah. Yep, that guy right there. <laughs> yeah. They, they tried to throw that in a century and like, nope, no wards. Yeah, well, now Fnatic are going to have a go. Take a look at Radiant Vision here, and they are blind, but SGR... Nice heads-up map awareness here. Kind of privy to the fact that all of Fnatic are missing off the map, and they were just pushing top lane. Probably stands to reason there could be some enemies in this big, dark area on the map, and they are going to stay turtled up on their side. They're just going to hold the high ground. They'll sack the Tier 2 tower. They know they don't have the vision advantage. And I have to say, Trent, it's an underwhelming play from a spectator perspective, but I respect it. They didn't run in there all willy-nilly. They played it safe, made the call to sacrifice that last outer tower, and I think it was the right one. Yeah, when you see your uh, other two lanes just battering into the towers and no one's there to defend, you're just kind of like, hmm, maybe we shouldn't go outside our base here, guys. And uh, I don't, it's kind of, it's a tough situation because it definitely feels like they need to force a fight to get back into this. Whereas if Fnatic just keep on farming, you're never going to really catch up here from the side of SGR. So they want to force something, but it can't be something where it's just so obvious that they're grouped up as five. They want to get that, you know, that pick off, as you mentioned, and yeah. probably push that into the next Roche. Well, now could be a time to try and force it because they've got a huge item picked up on the Death Prophet, the Octarine Core. Huge because it gets that ultimate on a shorter cooldown, so they can take fights more regularly and uh, also just makes her nice and beefy. She already has a lifesteal from the Spirit Siphon. Now it compounds with that lifesteal plus her little ghosty friends. It's just a ridiculous item on her in general, really. It, it makes her from, hey, she does a lot of damage and is kind of scary to, wow, she does a lot of damage and is now almost impossible to kill. <laughs> Yeah, it helps out so many things she has right now, too. It's going to be helping out the Ghost Scepter timing as well as the Yule Scepter. Yeah, And then, of course, just point. spamming out all your spells, so. Yeah. You know, I, even though I know that it works on items, I just don't intuitively think of that right away. I always get caught up on the spells, but Ocarine Core for items is just insane. Even having Yules on a 17-second cooldown, that, that makes a big difference for a hero like DP. If you can use that twice in a fight, twice during the duration of your ultimate uptime... That could be the difference between life and death, man. 
Yeah, it's kind of the same thing with Aether Lens, too, where I just, like, don't even consider it for a few things, and then I realize it affects every single blink for the rest of your game, and you're like, wow, Aether Lens is a really good item, guys. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Aether Lens is kind of a value item. It also gives me all so those... Weird. It's not like Lotus Orb, where I have to buy this shitty Perseverance, be like, hmm, great, now I have added regeneration 40 minutes into the game. This is so sweet. It actually gives you, you know, nice regen, nice mana pool. It's not a bad buildup. I'm, I'm an Aether Lens fan, man. I'm a, oh, I'm a huge Aether Lens fan. Big fan. I'm not. I'm not a fan of the treads on the Venge, honestly, just because of how far it sets you back from the the Aether Lens, Like instead of going for the Arcanes, but yeah, I, I can understand why to tank up against like Midnight Pulse, Black Hole, everything like that. It just makes me so sad because yeah. Aether Lens know, so busted on that hero. I've been I've been playing a lot with Ags Venge. Like I've been experimenting with that build, like going Brown Boots, rushing Ags. And if it's a game where you're getting momentum and you've got a lot of ganks, it's really good if you can get it by like 20, 22 minutes. But if you fall behind, it's total ass. It's a really cool concept for an Ags upgrade. I like that idea of having like a support that can sort of persist through death and still use yeah. spells. Like that's a, to me, that's just a really fascinating concept that I think has some potential in, in certain strategies. Oh, Mushi, oh, Mushi, oh no. Why would you walk into the darkness? You crazy rat bastard. He pops the BKB as well. Oh my God, Mod Packs. What is he doing? <laughs> Why would you do that? No, Lasso now onto Ray. Three four three is on his way oh, in. They might blow up Ray as well. What in the hell is happening? Both teams just lost their two big cores. Now the fight around the Roche pit continues. ZC ZC. He's in trouble. He gets flame broken back, and I think he's going down. It's a one for two. Fnatic take the fight somehow, some way. I don't want to be too hard on him, but that was like the epitome of horrible plays from Mushi right there. Well, I don't. In the I, end, I guess it works out. They I, like get the I, best two. I don't know. It's like all of it. He wa like, he walks up from the low ground when they're in Roche. No wards. Like look at the dire vision right now. Completely blind on their side of the river. They have Enigma. They could have used an Eidolon. He walks up, and then the cherry on the cake is he uses the BKB. That was his 10 second BKB reveal. Used it for like half a second and died in a Chronosphere. Oh. All right, I digress. I won't harp on it, but that was. <laughs> That was hard to watch, man. I'm sorry. I got emotional. It's, uh, it's understandable, you know. I'm I like Mushi, man. I respect him as a player. I like him as a guy. And seeing that is like that's go pause and get an energy drink, man. My God. I wonder, like, wait, how do they kill this bear now, though? Yeah. This oh. Is brutal. Oh, oh Bolcarino. I don't know if that was well timed or a little bit lucky because he was gonna blink anyway, but. Pretty clutch. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the mud golem was still up, but yeah, I think he just kind of had that sense of, ah, I've been here too long. Yeah. I'm out of here. All right. Well, this is it here, Trent. High ground siege. Chronosphere up in about five seconds. There's a bit of split pushing from the uh, Beastmaster in the top lane. He'll just get the creep wave going. He's got Forge Spirits with him. I like this play. Pressure the base, and then he will be able to just TP home. Brown boots, and there is a gem up on the Beastmaster. Interesting. Honestly, this is one of the best parts about Lone Druid right now, is the fact that he just TPs that bear to the top lane, and it can push out everything. Like, you just slap the TP scroll on the bear, TP it to the top, it pushes the whole lane out, your guys just kind of keep control of the side of the map, and then you go right back in. And it makes it so easy to push all three lanes at once, and uh, I, as you said, that gem, like, it's really good when you're just trying to help secure your side, and you feel like you're going to lose the game soon. You don't want to get caught with bad wards, and Ohio! Uh-oh, I was admiring the bear. Chains coming in now. Oh, oh, there's the Chronosphere. They're going to catch the Enigma, but now the Death Ward deployed right on the side of the Chronosphere. Enigma uses the Guardian Greaves, trying to get off the Black Hole. He uses it, but it gets interrupted right away. He ends up dying. That'll be the first pick in this fight. Now Venge, caught by the Lasso, will survive through it. The follow-up wasn't there, and Ohio goes down next. Mushi She's gets off the duel, but a swap. That'll interrupt it, and Mushi will still win the duel. Great play there, but still, is it going to be enough? Ray getting low, mid one, trying to chase him down. He's using the Soul Sucky Sucky to heal himself back up. They finish off the bear now mid one left all alone he resummons the bear they'll be able to hex it up his four teammates have gone down can they clean this up the radiance might get bocarino no he time walks to the low ground now chains ghost walk on he'll slow down the bear he needs to try to buy some time for his team. They really want to keep him alive to kill the bear again. This is a resummon. They'll get another 300 gold bounty, and now they're going to kill the middle, and he won't have a resummon, and he'll be... Oh, he had the Aegis as well. My God. So they're going to kill the bear. It's down for 100 seconds. They get the Aegis, and now they kill the Druid. The dream is happening here for SGR. They're finally going to be able to finish him oh, off. Can you Maybe imagine? Bocarino, you crazy bastard. Run! Run! Oh, God. He makes it out. They finally bring him down. 
cheese and crackers. As you will. That was nutso. That would have been one of the thickest Savage Roar plays of all time. You may get that kill. All right. I don't know. It, it started out pretty scrappy. There was like a blink and a, a scythe onto Ohio. I had to lead that off. The solo chronosphere on just the Enigma and the Death Ward coming out. It kind of felt like just you, without that big black hole. Wow, are they really going to get Ray after uh -oh. all that? Oh, lasso and the duel. The swap from the Venge yet again keeps Ray alive, at least for a little while longer. Still committed to the fight. Will be able to survive just a bit longer now they bring down Ray? the Venge. BKB used, Death Prophet, does she get out of here? Spirit Siphon again onto Ohio. Somebody take down the Crobulus. They can't do it. He turns it oh, now. Yo. Chrono on two. Mushi in three, four, three in trouble. They get Mushi. The Enigma's going to fall as well. SGR coming out huge in this exchange in the mid lane. How in the hell did they do that? I thought the Death Prophet was dead for sure. Wow. So, uh, about this game being quick and easy. Yeah, man. The Singapore rejects, they're turning some heads here. So I'm going to, uh... All right, so we got a little highlight here. I want to look at that last fight here. So this is the instant replay. So Ray just hanging out in the mid lane here, trying to farm some creeps. They catch him with a lasso right into a duel. They've got huge damage, but Beastmaster's there to follow up with a roar. Oh, God, are we... Is stuff happening in the game? Buybacks? Yeah, yeah, there's some buybacks. There's an exorcism. All right. Uh, so back to the instant replay here. Yeah, you're Ray good. Don't worry. Ray just barely stays alive. The Ghost Scepter, it, the dude Spirit Siphon with Octarine Core is just disgusting. He has his ult the entire time. He never even uses it. They wipe the team fight without the Exorcism. God. So now what's happening in the real game? Are they gonna fight? Oh, there's a pause. Okay. Yeah, they uh, they started Exorcism, so they bought back, so they backed on Singapore Rejects. That's I all. I see. I wish I had tentacles for eyes so I could watch the game and the replay at the same time. Tentacles for eyes? How would that help? Well, you know, like multiple <laughs> eyes as if they had ten. <laughs> tentacles are to octopuses as eyes. I don't know. What Never. Damn it, Trent. <laughs> <laughs> These are the things that happen when there's a pause. You know, you, you get to really analyze all that you know, the shit that we're talking about. It's, it never ends well. You can't overthink these things that we just kind of ramble over the game. The idea is that you're just distracted enough by the game that you're not really listening to what we say. All right, so I got another happens. replay. Now, this is the fight prior. Um, this is right after they... This is the one where they... Right after Roche, where Lone Druid still has the Aegis. So they catch the Enigma first. That's really the golden ticket for this fight. He dies. Ohio gets a lasso. There's no follow-up. It just feels like Fnatic are not well-coordinated. Mushi... I would say gets lucky with this duel, honestly. Like, he <laughs> barely yeah, wins. There's close. a swap. He chases him. Like, he has to commit super hard. That could have easily gone the other way if he didn't get a counterattack right when he did. And, of course, they have to play Ring Around the Rosie to kill mid one. But getting the bear twice is huge. We've talked about it a couple times now. It's a 300 gold bounty, a whole bunch of experience. It's, it counts as a hero oh, kill. You get that twice. You know that he doesn't have a resummon, and you kill him again. That's that's like the dream when you're playing against Lone Druid. It really doesn't get much better than that. Oh, man. I'm so excited. Like, this game is completely, like, it really looked like I thought that Fnac had hit that stride Look where it's like we got all our big items. Yeah, exactly. And it was like, all right, it was fun while SGI were winning, but now we're just going to go to, like, a 10k devs, get 15, 25. They'll choke them out. They'll farm the whole map, and they'll win. Uh, but no. Uh, they've kind of lost, the, you know, a little bit of that discipline that they had during the fang the uh, Shanghai Majors. Like, they beat OG. Like, they played really well. Now, they're missing DJ. I know they have a stand in here, but... SGR, I think you got to give a lot of credit to them. It's not just the big screw-ups here from Fnatic. Oh, yeah. No, they are playing really well. They've been playing this well since the first blood, you know, with that smoke rotation. No, Marino! Oh, God, he goes in. He breaks the smoke from Fnatic. He gets caught in the lasso, but can he survive to get off the Chronosphere? Swap. It doesn't look like it. Duel is there. Swap again. Witch Doctor still gets the kill, though, and it's a disaster for SGR. Buyback starting to come out. Oh, They'll no. lose the Invoker as well. Finally, Fnatic get the plays they've been looking for. The smoke pays off as Bocarino blinks right into their entire team, unbeknownst to him. That was brutal. Oh, oh, he even refreshed on the Invoker. So, so many mistakes. Oh, no. Oh, no, did he? Yeah, oh, like, God. he didn't even get to cast anything. 
Well, now this tier three tower is gonna be under heavy siege. This bear is going ham. The glyph has already come out. Tower will end up falling. Remember, Fnatic's still have all of their heroes alive and a lot of these ultimates coming up. Lasso in 10, Death Ward in 40, and they still have the Black Hole. Duel now off cooldown. Can they find a pick? There is a buyback available on the Invoker, trying to hold it as long as he can. Mid one will just go for the melee barracks. He'll finish it off, but now the Chronosphere from Bocarino. There's no follow-up damage. They'll deploy the DP ultimate, but they can't get in position to actually do the damage. Sunstrike does connect on Ohio. Now they're leaving the base. Tornado connects on one. It's the Enigma. 3-4-3 three, three, thrown up in the air, silenced Hex, now he's in a lot of trouble, duel to follow up, but it's not going to be enough to swap on the wrong target and the Invoker falls. Oh my, this isn't the fight SGR wanted, it's a dieback for the Invoker, he had to buy back to make this happen, now Ray caught by the Entangling Roots, just barely lives long enough to get off the Yules, but now he comes back down to planet Earth and it could be to his demise, Mushi with the blade mail on, but there's a Soul Siphon, he's somehow still doing it, can you live Ray? The answer is no, he falls, no buyback and it looks like Fnatic may finally be able to do it. ZC, ZC, ZC on the run, and Mushi will finish him off and send him to a watery grave. Three down, no buybacks, and Fnatic will finally do some crippling damage. Well, it was exciting. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> this was one hell of a game, though. We'll see Bocarino throw out another Chronosphere, plus possibly the last of the game. Death Ward right outside of the Chrono will be enough to secure the kill on the Beast Master. No buyback on him either. And Fnatic say, hey, forget about these side lanes, man. We're going straight for it. We're going to get some Tier 4s, get this thrown, and SGR will tap out. GG well played. Fnatic moving on to the round of 8 in the upper bracket. And that'll put SGR down to the lower bracket here for their opening round. One hell of a showing, though. A shame that this is a best of three because I think uh, SGR definitely surprised a few of us. Yeah, I mean, it's got to feel good coming in as a essentially completely unknown team that have only formed just, like, for the major season and everything like that. So you get yourself into a tournament through a qualifier. And uh, you do pretty well against Fnatic. Can't quite close it out. But Fnatic, they... Uh, they had some issues, you know, some of those early duels may have gone a little bit better, you know, I guess it's just perhaps a little bit of rust, uh, they've looked good in their replay matches since coming back, but maybe DJ is kind of that glue that holds everything together, and when he's back, they'll, they'll be a little bit more on form, And but yeah. you know, they won the game, that's what really matters. Yeah, no, absolutely, it's a double limb tournament, so if there's ever a time to try something a little different, if you're not on your A game, uh, they, they had a safety net here, so who knows, we could theorycraft for ages, but I'm just happy we had a awesome back and forth you know I, i'm th those those nine minute stomps are fun every so often but it's way more exciting when you have a game like this and it's actually topsy-turvy and you feel like either team could have taken it at uh, at one point so well played by both sides the lone druid coming in big 16 fantasy points in the end my god chain's getting quite a few himself so that's it for today though mr mott packs uh, thank you so much for joining me man we only had one matchup for the c kappa invitationals coverage will resume tomorrow i believe mott's going to be doing the casting i think we have two or three games there and then um yeah there's just more c kappa so that's uh, that's the good stuff mott packs always a pleasure follow him on twitter at mott packs m-o-t-p-a-x he's a real badass and he's throwing around numbers like it ain't no thing true story true story all right guys we're done for today we'll see you next time